Hey everybody, my name is Wyatt and I'm Fur to Tunes and today we are talking about Modal Soul by New Jebes, specifically my personal connections and memories with it. I do this series to give a bit more of a personal touch to the music that we all love and I highly suggest you guys leave your stories below. Now I have long lasting memories with this one but I have to start from the beginning because I feel like this album sort of single-handedly sparked the strong ambition I have to discover new music. This was the first thing I listened to that was just so far off my radar at the time and I genuinely feel lucky to have heard it when I did. It really felt like a gift from the universe type shit. We'll get to that. So flashback to high school Wyatt. <laughs> my good friend gives me this album, says it's a dope relaxing listen and I'm sure I misheard him or something but I was fully under the impression that this was a jazz album. I completely readied myself for an hour of just Japanese jazz music and was just gonna see how it was gonna hit. I know it's like jazz rap but I thought it was like a orchestrated traditional type jazz album. So one night I was bored as hell and decided to just dive head first into it. I turned the lights off, put a visualizer on my monitor, good headphones on, and I dove in. It was the first time I ever listened to an album like that, with the intention to stay attentive, with laser focus. And it's weird to me because I didn't know anything about it, I had no clue what it was gonna sound like. Lo and behold, this very thing would become my hobby, almost like a ritual to me for a lot of albums. And I just spend the next years of my life, well, up until now and forever really, listening to music like this. Always diving deeper and trying to find new music that'll blow my mind in the way this album gave me an unforgettable, damn near spiritual experience on my first listen. And so the album starts with Feather. And I'm immediately caught off guard and pleasantly surprised. If you know the channel, you know I quite literally studied hip hop in high school. I had a pretty unhealthy obsession with just the sound, genre, culture, everything about it. And as much as I was ready for a jazz album and a nice change of pace, this song just quickly sucked me right back into the strong love and appreciation I had for the hip hop sound. I knew I was helplessly in love with this song before it was even halfway done. The carefree piano loop over the kind of dusty boom bap drums it was like crack to me at that point, and I knew I was in for something special. Track two, Ordinary Joe, threw me for another loop. I was completely engaged, but I kept thinking, okay, is this jazz? Is this hip hop? Classical? Fucking spoken word? Like, I, I was just mystified. And I very quickly stopped trying to analyze and make sense of what I was hearing label wise. And I, that's when I really tuned into the drum patterns. And that was easily the most mind blowing part of the album for me on my first listen. But we'll get into that. Reflection Eternal caught me for its immaculate chops. The piano melody and head bobbing beat with the subtle claps, it was a perfect recipe and the vocal sample on top was the icing on the cake for real. I don't know why, but on my first listen, I was convinced that the vocals sampled on this were John Mayer. It just goes to show you how much my mom and my sister played his music when I was younger. So it's safe to say I was pretty mind blown by the album, only three tracks in, but Lord, did I have no idea what was about to happen to me. Love Sick Part 3 comes on and I'm immediately in this trance. The beat patterns all over this thing are basically perfect in my eyes, but the beat starts with this perfect little echo on the clap, which leads into this splash of classic hip hop scratching and chopping up. And it very quickly sends you into this world of sound with these almost, they sound to me like warped bells that just sort of hum and cascade around you in this gorgeous melody before they warp in and out of your ears and leads you into the loop. And this world of sound just only starts elevating you when the first hook comes in and there's these subtle violins that just feel like they're sitting above the clouds. I realized this in the moment and I will say it proudly now. This is easily one of the most unbelievable things my ears will ever hear. I just couldn't believe how meticulously detailed and how perfectly mixed and crafted every single sound was. The loop itself isn't that long, but it's just so jam-packed with life and just organic production. I, I cannot articulate 
just, it is seriously unfathomably beautiful. I noticed through this song too that the mixing on it was one of the most unique I've ever heard. I found myself effortlessly allowing the vocals to fade out of focus, allowing me to hear every little glimmer and detail in the beats and the production. And I remember thinking during it, I felt like I could be listening to an instrumental if I wanted to, but every time that hook came back in, the vocals just grabbed my attention and my heart as well. I feel like the more life I live, the more I grow attached to this song. Thematically, it matches the exact same feeling I have towards music as a whole. And lyrically, it brings this motivation to appreciate life and just move forward. Honestly, one of the best rap songs ever made in my eyes. So then comes Music Is Mine and the fucking drums on here, man. I was so enamored with the drums on this track that only up until I got it on vinyl, I heard that there were vocals on this track. I just didn't hear that for like four fucking years. But seriously, I could talk about the drum pattern on this song all damn day. And even back in high school, the day I listened to it came back to my friend who gave it to me and said, yo, the drums on that track blew my shit off. And then he comes back the next day and he says, yo, like, I didn't even realize how crazy the drums were on that song until you mentioned it to me. And that's just the beauty of music, obviously, but it really goes to show you just how many layers there are to every single track on this album. It, it's really like you're diving into a new world every time. After Eclipse and The Sign, the album sort of started to blend together for me a bit, not in a bad way in the slightest. I, I just felt like I reached this peak that I couldn't feel any higher from. I was still impressed with with each and every song for so many different reasons, but I, I just felt deeply content and comfortable with how the album was going, and I had calmed down a bit, and, and I was just really just flowing with it as naturally as possible. Much like how I felt with Porter Robinson's latest album, I mentioned in my last video, it was just like individual songs didn't mean shit to me. I was just sitting with the album and flowing with every single sound that came to me. So a few years pass of me bumping this album, it really never left my rotation. And one day I'm bumping it and just doing stuff around the house and Horizon, the last song, just opens my eyes and I honestly can't explain what happened to me. It was literally like the universe just placed this emotion and feeling inside of me as soon as the song started. And I was literally, I had my headphones in, I was literally just walking around my house looking at everything with the utmost gratefulness and appreciation and admiration. Like just every inch on the wall, every room, I was like turning on my sink and I'm like, oh my God, there's water. Like I need to be more grateful for all this shit I have. It was, it was literally like the entire world just hit me with this perspective and I just, I've never felt more grateful for my life and my house and everything I had just in my entire life. I got it on vinyl just a few months ago as soon as I found out it was pressed in Japan. And if you asked me from the minute I started collecting vinyl, if I could have one album on record that had never been officially pressed, that was it for sure. Stay Trippy was a close second, but that's another video. <laughs> Having it on vinyl was literally a dream come true and it sounded better than I could have ever imagined. It gave me a whole new love and appreciation for this just beautiful piece of music. And it's funny because up until I started writing this video, any time I thought about that first listen and really went back to how it first hit me, I, I always thought, I was like, oh man, I was so high when that, I was so baked, like, I wasn't even, and I really thought about it, and I'm like, wait, grade 10, I'm pretty sure I listened to it. I hadn't smoked weed for the first time until like two years later, and that just blows my mind even more because it was such an unbelievable first listen. Honestly, probably the best I've ever had for any album ever, and it really just took me into this realm. Like I said, I had the lights off and everything, so I kind of set myself up for it, but literally, it, I mind-blowing is a fucking understatement and a half. Literally, like, I've never been encapsulated by music like that. It was a full-blown spiritual experience. Like, my life was changing before my very ears. And again, it's crazy for me to think because I literally just dove into that 
No idea who he was, what it was about, anything. I, I still struggle to maintain attention sometimes when I'm diving into something, even if it's super interesting. I'm ADD as hell, if y'all don't know. And so it's always just insane to me to think about how focused I was on the music during that first listen, because especially in high school, you know, ADD was... Holy, it was peaking. Uplifting themes can be my favorite thing in music, period. And this album is so filled with it. And I have to mention the song Thank You because it literally feels like a celebratory song for hip hop culture. And it never fails to just really remind me why I love it so much. That's about all I have to say in terms of my experience with the album, but I, I, I just, oh, I would hate myself if I didn't mention Flowers and World's End Rhapsody. Two of the best beats I've ever heard. Two of my favorite beats ever, period. Uh, like, oh. Every single song on here really can fit into that category. It's it's amazing how good this album is to me. I, like, oh, fucking hell. I could, man, I'm gonna waste too much time on this one. It's become a soundtrack to life for me. And it's quite easily one of my favorite albums ever. Like top 10 for sure. I honestly think this album should be held in regard as like this generation's version of these albums. I don't really like saying oh, it's this generation's whatever, but like I really think this thing deserves that classic status as much as these albums do, which is big. Cause you know, these are some of the best ever, ever, ever. Holy fuck, I'm breaking my brain again. What I'm trying to say is it's timeless. It's timeless. That's the word I'm looking for. It's so soothing, serene, and relaxing, and also just so groovy and fun and even danceable at times. Like, it's just, it's filled with so many themes of admiration for life. And I just, I think people need that pushed more toward, or people need to appreciate life, you know what I mean? Just bottom line, so I, I'm rambling now as I fucking always do, but I cannot recommend this album enough. Even if you've heard it before, toss it on again. It's guaranteed to make your day better. One of the best albums ever made in my eyes. Yeah, like period. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this kind of style of videos. It's still pretty fresh. This is the second one in the series. So rest in peace, new Jabez. You inspiring legend, thank you for everything. I'll definitely have a discography ranking coming at some point on him because just all his music really is so... Mm, yeah. It's insane how fantastic it is. Seriously, like it's it's hard to take in for me. My, my brain can't handle all the beautiful music. You can follow me on Instagram, come talk some shit with me on Twitter, all that links in the description. And I'll leave you with my instrumental cover of the sign. Enjoy.